Uh, sir, we still don't have uh, uh, Mr. Ganesh Nayak, who's not logged in yet. So, do we still go ahead without him? Yeah. Somebody can message him. Okay. We can start. Yeah. We can start. All right. All right, sir. I'll connect you to the main call. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Zydus Wellness Limited Quarter 2 FY 2021 Post Results Q&A Session with Analyst and Investors Conference Call. If a participant is connected on webcast and the audio bridge, you are requested to mute the audio from the webcast to avoid any echo or any disturbance. To ask a question, participants are requested to click on the link for instructions to dial into the audio call to ask the questions. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Tarun Arora, CEO. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good afternoon and welcome to the post results teleconference of Zydus Wellness Limited for quarter two financial year 2021. We have with us Dr. Shavil Patel, Chairman, Mr. Anish Nayak, Director, Mr. Umesh Parik, CFO, and Mr. Vishal Gaur, Senior Vice President, Corporate Finance at Kerala Healthcare Limited. As the country is fighting the pandemic and our economy is gradually opening up with the necessary safety measures, the quarter, by, quarter gone by witnessed a revival in growth rate of our business as well. As a result of which, we recorded a growth of 9.3% at gross sales level for the quarter and 4.9% at total revenue from operations. The reason for lower growth at total revenue from operations level during the quarter is due to lower than uh, is due to lower uh, uh, operating income in the form of GST budgetary support as the same as discontinued for our Sitarganj plant from January 2020 onwards and aggressive cut in trade spends last year. Health and wellness portfolio of our major brands have become even more relevant during the COVID times. Following are some of the highlights of the growth trajectory of our brands during the quarter gone by. Sugar-free along with Sugarlight saw a very good traction aided by increased in, uh, increase in home consumption. Glucon D and Isil continued to do well during the uh, off-season. Every youth and Neutralite saw a revival month after month. While every youth has already touched the pre-COVID level, Neutralite is expected to touch the same in the short period of time. Dairy-led product like Sampriti Ghee registered a remarkable growth over the last year. From the channel perspective, growth was mainly driven by general trade and e-commerce, while Mon Trade reported degrowth for the portfolio. E-commerce grew across the portfolio at 130% plus, uh, mainly on brands Sugarfree and Complan and all others as well while general trade grew at around 10%. International business doubled itself and contributed to 5% of the revenue for the quarter. As a part of a strategic initiative to pare down the debt, uh, the debt the company has bought back its no own non-convertible uh, non debentures of rupees 11,050 million, which will help the company reduce the debt burden and deleverage the balance sheet. In the process of buying back its own non-convertible debentures, the company has paid one-time debenture redemption premium of rupees 980 million, which is recorded as exceptional item in our financials for the quarter. During the quarter, the company has successfully completed preferential issue uh, and QIP issue of equity shares by raising rupees 3,499 million and rupees 6,500 million respectively from the above issuance, the proceeds of which will be used towards redemption of non-convertible debentures. The completion of buyback of non-convertible debentures will have a positive impact on the earning per share of the company over a period of time. Let me take you through the highlights of consolidated financial performance of quarter two, FY 2021. During the second quarter of FY 2021, our total income was from operations to debt uh, rupees 3,420 million, uh, up by 4.9%. EBITDA was down by 10.9% year, year on year to 271 million rupees, 
However, the same was up by 11% before the GST budgetary support that ceased for Sitarganj plant from uh, January 2020 onwards. PBT before the exceptional items was down by 63.1% year on year to uh, negative 74 million rupees. However, the same was up by 27% before GST uh, budgetary support that ceased for Sitarganj plant from January 2020 onwards. Net profit stood at negative 1053 million rupees. With that, let me share some of the highlights of the operation for the quarter gone by. We continued our thrust on marketing initiatives to grow the categories and increase market share of our, uh, market share of our brands during the quarter. To narrate a few, on the Glucon D front, during the quarter, Glucon D Immunovolt was launched to tap the heightened need of immunity products for kids. The product is loaded with vitamin C, vitamin D and zinc to boost immunity. The launch was supported with TV and digital media initiatives. The core business continued to get impacted with COVID lockdowns and adverse uh, weather conditions. On the Complan front, during the quarter gone by, we continue to invest behind the brand through consumer offers and uh, communication. To participate in the sachet uh, market targeted towards North and East, we also launched Complan 75 gram sachet at rupees 30 price point. On the sweetness, uh, sweeteners front, during the quarter gone by, Sugar Free has continued to grow strongly backed by consistent investment in mainline and digital media to drive relevance for sugar substitutes. To capitalize the gro uh, growing consumer preference for shopping on e-commerce, the brand has significantly increased its investments on this channel and this has helped brand grow at more than 100% versus last year for the same uh, uh, same quarter on this channel. Sugarlight witnessed very good traction despite COVID-19 and related lockdowns. The growth was supported with the specific media and other uh, activations. On the Nicel front, the brand witnessed a very good traction supported with media campaign during the quarter. On the Ivy Youth front, during the quarter gone by, the brand witnessed a revival month after month backed by investments in advertising with a TV campaign for uh, flagship face scrub portfolio to boost optics. Every youth also introduced a new product, uh, uh, Every youth aloe vera and cucumber gel in the face moisturizers uh, segment with an aggressive on ground push. On the neutralite front, uh, relaxation and COVID lockdowns has seen the renewed demand month after month during the quarter gone by. We have also launched new neutralite. Uh, choco spread on e-commerce and monetary platforms. Neutralite choco spread is available in two healthier uh, healthy variants, crunchy quinoa and calcium enrich. Uh, the launch was supported with visibility on both the channels. Going forward, we have rolled out Project Vistar, which will expand our direct distribution by one and a half lakh outlets to five lakh outlets by the end of financial year 2021. We are poised for a strong growth of our uh, growth of our brand, business, led by good volume growth. With the upcoming festive season, we also see recovery in demand in discretionary spends uh, brands like Every Youth. We also see a surge in demand for Nutrilite as more and more food services joints open up. Thank you, and we will now start the Q and A session. Over to the coordinator for the Q and A. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. To ask a question, participants are requested to click on the link for instructions to dial into the audio call to ask the questions. If a participant is connected on the webcast and on the audio bridge, you are requested to mute the audio from webcast to avoid any echo or any disturbance. We take the first question from the line of Abneesh Roy from Edelweiss Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Uh, my first question is on compliance. So, uh, it's uh, 75 grand, 30 rupee SKU. Uh, how deep uh, will be the penetration and how is the current percentage uh, LUP contribution to compliance some sense you can give? So, uh, so it's uh, early days. We have just launched uh, this SKU. So, it's a, a small contribution to the overall business right now. It will be less than 5%. About 2 to 3%. And, uh, it's early days. 
and uh, one follow on uh, on this uh, so market leader had uh, some manufacturing issues because of covid then they have also taken one of their uh, brands boost pan india uh, so did you benefit in q2 because of uh, some shortage of the market leader and uh, do you see some uh, higher competitive intensity because of boost being taken maximum so uh, we have seen uh, at a overall level while brand has uh, been uh, flattish the largely the growths are coming good growths are coming uh, mid singles from uh, general trade and e-commerce has seen a substantial growth uh, mon trade as a channel has been under pressure so that's been pulling up the brand uh, from a competition in- intensity i think uh, nothing significant i'm sure uh, well may have impacted uh, the competitors primary sales but there is product available in the market so competitor competition intensity continues the way it has been uh we are uh, focused on our actions in driving business growth which is uh, largely right now two channels supporting us uh, in that direction general trade and uh, e-commerce and my last question is e-commerce if you could give us some sense on what was it uh, <coughs> in terms of different portfolio segments as a percentage of sales last year and uh, how is it this year and uh, do you see the sustain so so e-commerce is something which uh, for the quarter gone by was about 4.5% of our sales and it is uh, at a overall portfolio level uh, more than 130% uh brand like complan has seen a substantial gain from that uh, more than the overall business levels closer to 200% and uh, uh, that's really helping us uh, pull the brand forward and overcome uh, whatever losses we've had in bond trade Okay, that's very helpful, sir. Thanks, and all the best. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Janesh Chedda from Dimensional Securities. Please go ahead. Janesh Chedda from Dimensional Securities. Your line is unmuted. Please go to the question. Line unmuted. Zero question. No, he. अरे आवाज़ कम नहीं था तो. Janeshada, we can hear you. Please go ahead with the question. Uh, yeah, actually, I wanted to understand that uh, how much would be the sales segment-wise for each product, if possible, and so why has there been a negative impact in the margins? So overall, we don't share uh, brand-wise uh, numbers. So we've given okay. a direction numbers. Uh, the and uh, overall... any specific reasons? For... Yeah, sorry. Yeah, Umesh, will you want to pick up the uh, margin? So, okay, let me handle it. Uh, from a business perspective, our uh, uh, like for like without the one times and the GST budgetary support, we have seen a positive eleven uh, percent improvement in EBITDA and about. Uh, 27% uh, at pvt level the factors influencing the ebitda or a margin level is uh, uh, one is the fact that there is uh, uh, the gst budgetary support uh, which has been which was there till last year which is no more and therefore while we are improving our margins and we'll overcome that but it is it takes some time uh, for us to overcome that so that's one fundamental factor at a operating level where the margin is impacted uh, the other factors uh, being uh, Uh, in our uh, profit being the one time expense of 98 crores on account of uh, the uh, no, uh, ncdp so looking at the one time i'm uh, looking till abitda level yeah so at abitda level uh, yeah go on please you saying something yes sir yes yeah, so what I, i was asking all yeah i'm sorry EBITDA level it is 11% Ramesh you can yes. answer at the EBITDA level yeah. because of GST yeah, yeah. so G- at EBITDA level the uh, GC level and EBITDA level both the effect is of discontinuation of GST budgetary support at Sitarganj which ceased to exist from January 2020 onwards and there is a 7 crore of impact in the uh, you know in the margin because of that otherwise it will be positive 11% yeah okay got it yeah thank you so much thank you the next question is from the line of lohit harlekar from elara capital please go ahead elara 
Lohit Harlikar from Elara Capital. Please unmute the line from your side and go ahead with a question. Lohit from Elara Capital. Please unmute the line from your side and go ahead. As there's no response, we take the next question from the line of Archer Lotswal from Sher Khan. Please go ahead. Achal Oswal from Sher Khan, please unmute the line and go ahead with your question. Achal from Sher Khan, please unmute and go ahead with your question. As there's no response, we take the next question from the line of Vismay Agarwal from ICACA Securities. Please go ahead. Vismay Agarwal from ICACA Securities, please unmute the audio call and go ahead with the question. Uh, hi, yeah, hi, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, just wanted to get a sense of uh, how big uh, Sugar Light ha has become and you know your, your outlook on, on the particular brand. Sugar Light should be uh, close to about uh, this year about 5% of uh, sugar-free uh, in terms of revenues. Uh, it's still early days. This year, it's largely uh, on track on our milestones. Uh, it's still one more year before we can say that, yes, we've crossed that. Now, it started at least first one, six months or one year were a uh, little harder. But this year, it's been on track. It's showing good momentum. Uh, if it stays on track, uh, we are hoping to make it a sizable brand over the near future. Answered. That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Tejas Shah from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, first time adjustments. Uh, uh, so, sir, if you can actually uh, get the number on the targets, uh, gross budget we support in 1Q uh, last year, 2Q and 3Q, because I believe that will be uh, again impacting our numbers in, in coming quarter as well. Yeah, so Sitargan budgetary support was to the tune of 32 crore for the full year. So that will have an impact on the next quarter as well. As this quarter is impacted by 7 crore next quarter also, it will be impacting the almost about the same same 7, 8 crore. Okay. So, so the same quantum would have impacted the same one crore as well, right? Yeah. Okay. So the second, uh, the more adjustment that we are seeing for last two, three quarters was that on employee cost. So, for example, in one year ago, our full number of days were of employee cost was 1883 crore. But in uh, today's number, it is 1560 crore. And uh, when our annual report came out, it was 1746 crore. And obviously, at the bit of it gets adjusted on our some other expenses. But this adjustment pertains to what? You are asking about the one-off in the other expenses? No, sir. Employee cost. Sorry. Employee cost, when I say consolidated employee cost, when we published our annual okay. report, it was 1746 crore in FY20, uh, which more to 83 crore in our 1K results, and now 1560 crore in today numbers. So the employee cost, the increase is largely on account of the generally the you know inflation and uh, uh, increment driven increase is just about. Uh, six seven percent this quarter. The rest of the increase is on alignment of the crop uh, times policies, uh, Zydus policies with the crop times policies with the Zydus policy, and we have mainly in leave encashment and graduate to align the policies. So the in, uh, because of the actual valuation, the cost is higher by about four and a half percent. I was referring to this statement in the board. I don't know why I can't take this no, off. No, voice is not clear. Uh, voice is not clear. Yeah. Voice is not clear. Uh, yeah. uh, hello? Okay, sorry. Uh, is that better? Hello? No, yeah, we have, is it better? Yeah, we have a bad voice. Still bad? Hello? Yeah, still bad. Yeah. Hello? Still bad. Okay. Okay, I'll have to add the uh, name and the queue from better location, perhaps. Yeah. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Sanjay Manial from ICACA Direct. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. I uh, just want to understand uh, if there is any impact of the commodity uh, cost 
बिकॉज आइडली मिल्क प्राइजेस शुड आई बीन डाउन इन लास्ट सिक्स मंथ सो वट वुड आई बीन इम्पैक्ट ऑफ दैट एंड इफ देर इज एनी अदर एडवर्स कमोडिटी मूवमेंट uh there has been slightly adverse impact on the milk price because in the compound though prices have been down we have getting the benefit in the ghee manufacturing uh the issue is with the you know complan where we consume the smp which was manufactured few months before but now onwards coming 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 quarter you will st- you will see the reflection of the good milk prices in the complan as well So it's a weighted average. If I can take that question, I think you will see a good improvement because of milk pricing on the margins uh, yeah. for Complan, and the only uh, material which is the uh, palm oil, which is obviously gone up recently, has only a little bit of negative impact. Otherwise, most of the commodities are on the yeah. positive side. Okay, okay, and uh, if you can really specify on the taxation part, the income tax part, uh, uh, till what time? Uh, Uh, will be at the zero tax uh, and uh, what exactly is the nature of this uh, 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 you know uh, taxation uh, provision sure so we have answered this in earlier forums as well the zero tax is mainly on account of the goodwill depreciation which we uh, charge in the income tax books of account as well as the accounts accounting books of accounts the this benefit will uh, continue till next 4 to 5 years Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jignesh Makwana from Asian Markets. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, Hello. I am. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. I just want to know, if, um, on a gross margin front, what is the comparable gross margin for this particular quarter? Huh? Yeah, so comparable gross margin on the net sales basis. The previous quarter, mm-hmm. the same quarter last year, it was fifty five point five. In this mm-hmm. quarter, it is fifty three point four percent. And the effect of two okay. percent is mainly on account of GST budgetary support discontinuation that we explained in the call earlier. Okay, but if I remember, sir, last uh, in last uh, last uh, quarter, you said you have witnessed you have witnessed the the dynamics of the material price is and the gross margin so it's improving if i adjust uh, even the budgetary support also my gross margin is not improving actually so any particular reason or any adverse sales mix you are witnessing no mainly as i as i told you the uh, milk prices have been benign and uh, the benefit will start coming in the next quarter till now you know we mm-hmm. have been using the uh, smp manufactured earlier and that was impact in the complan uh, gross margin also the rpo prices have also really you know shot up in the recent past but that will impact the gross margin in the coming quarter but other than this too like we don't see any impact. complan margin will definitely improve in the next quarter sure and one more big thing question from my side what is the net debt position is that the reason debt So as on date, as we speak, we have retired uh, our earlier date of 1500 crore of NCD. Uh, we have extinguished mm-hmm. all the NCDs. Uh, currently, we are mm-hmm. having a net debt of about uh, about 250 crore because about okay. 250 crore. Yeah. And what is the reason behind our other financial liabilities in the current uh, current liability has shot up significantly? Is it because of uh, Uh, the loans which we are going to uh, repay over the next one year because of that particular reason. So you are you are looking at current financial current current financial liability. Current fin- other current financial liability that has shot up significantly. No, that is that is NCD has been uh, actually you know NCD has been uh, extinguished, uh, repurchased, and there is a three ninety five crore of NCDs which is left. Which will also be uh, we have already extinguished in the month of October. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sayantan Maji from Credit Suisse. Please go ahead. Sayantan Maji from Credit Suisse. Please unmute the audio call and ask your question. Sanjeev Maji, please unmute your line and go ahead with your question.
As there's no response, we take the next question from the line of Amit from SBI Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Amit from SBI Mutual Fund, please unmute your line and go ahead with the question. Amit from SBI, please unmute your line and go ahead with the question. As there's no response, we take the next question from the line of Kostu Pavaskar from Sher Khan. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, uh, thanks for giving me the opportunity. Uh, so I just have one question or a clarification. So you just mentioned in the call that your general trade uh, grew by 10% and there is a strong growth uh, in e-commerce of around 130%, which contributes 5% of your revenues. Uh, so is there sub uh, substantial decrease in the modern trade sir? And uh, what is the contribution of the modern trade? So, so modern trade has seen a high double digit degrowth in the last quarter. Uh, there is also a okay. small element of CSD also, which has also pulled us down. So there are, but CSD being uh, relatively uh, less impacted, I think modern trade is the bigger impact. A routine modern trade used to do anything between 13, 14%. It has come down because of this uh, high double digit uh, degrowth, which is largely linked to what is happening in the modern trade. Uh, both in one major account plus generally bond trade is down. So these are the fundamental. Right, right, right. And, uh, and right, we have started seeing recovery in some of the discretionary items like ever you uh, and uh, neutral life also might uh, gear up the momentum mainly because uh, the uh, 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 food outlets uh, started opening. So should we expect Q3 the growth to be better than what it was in Q2. Also, neutral light is one of the, uh, you know, larger contributor to the revenues. Earlier, it was one of the larger contributor to the uh, Q3 revenues. Uh, so, uh, on that perspective, should we expect uh, Q3 to be better? So, so momentum-wise, I expect a similar growth pattern to uh, remain uh, because uh, uh, even if we look at uh, without, uh, at a gross sales level, we've got close to about 10%, which is a fair number. So, we, we are hopeful that uh, we'll continue with the similar momentum of uh, uh, targeting a double-digit growth rate. Uh, of course, there will be in our reporting an impact of... Sorry? Talk about neutral light. They're saying you sequentially, sure. yes, we will do better sequentially on neutral light going forward. Yeah, so sequentially it will be better, but they will there may still be some distance to cover versus the last year. So we are hoping to touch last year's numbers by end of this calendar year. So there may be still some numbers which may be uh, behind that. Yeah. And one last uh, on the market share, uh, uh, you know, point. Uh, so uh, any any data points in terms of whether you have, uh, you know, meant, uh, you know, uh, gain any market share in some of your categories like, uh, uh, you know, Glucon D or for that matter, Complan, because since you, now you are in, uh, you know, uh, promoting your uh, uh, LUP, that is 75 uh, uh, rupees back. Uh, so, uh, in, ter in terms of market share, have you seen any any kind of improvement? So, so we we are not very uh, we are not very confident of the Nielsen data, and that's why we have not shared it because it is uh, it it is unreliable. But if if I were to quote any uh, direction from that, I think uh, uh, Glucon D and uh, Complan are more or less in the same trajectory as they were. Uh, Nicel has been reported as a uh, growth in uh, market share by them. Okay, okay. And uh, sugar-free as a category have now uh, crossed the pre-COVID levels or uh, in terms of growth or uh, any yes. any any yes. any uh, direction on that trend? So sugar-free uh, for both the quarters gone by has seen a good double-digit growth. Uh, it is now operating uh, well, be above, uh, well above the pre-COVID levels. Uh, that's one category which is uh, seeing a consistent momentum and we are hopeful that we can sustain that as we go. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for that. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Praveen Sahe from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Um, 
thank you for taking my question uh, so the first question is related to as you had communicated earlier that uh, your summer uh, you know product you want to make it on a uh, season neutral and for that uh, uh, in the month of uh, this uh, october uh, month of uh, second summer you will uh, you know go and uh, do the sales and uh, get some uh, you know sales in generate some sales in that uh, tenure so how is the progress uh, in that uh, scenario sir so we have seen uh, uh, improved growths uh, in fact nicel has had a good double digit growths uh, uh, in the quarter gone by and right up to now so we are seeing nicel showing a better traction uh, post the season also glucondi was uh, fairly affected by the season so it's not even through the quarter but uh, we have seen some uh, uh, improvement in growth in the uh, uh, in the second season if uh, september october are referred to plus initiatives that we are taking in terms of having in, uh, you know uh, improving uh, our presence on the brand uh, beyond the june which includes uh, glucondi immunovolt uh, which has uh, contributed to the growth on the brand on glucondi so so overall both have shown a positive uh, movement it's a it's a bit of journey that we'll have to do but uh, we are taking initiatives our early uh, response from the market is uh, showing a positive direction so i think if i can uh, is that thing uh, to it uh, uh, this is sharbal here so one is as he said nicel with the launch of the new variant nicel uh, i mean that part of the strategy is working out uh, with uh, glucon d also with the launching something uh, to do with the cold season also we hope we can uh, create some traction for that brand which is very summer oriented sugar free is more consistent across in terms of the business and uh, so will be neutralized with the additions of new business lines that we adding in that space so by and large we are on track to make sure that we even out our our you know our sales trends uh, from summer to more even it out but yeah. it will be a process of at least uh, one to two years by then uh, also any color on the specific to the nicel and glucon d uh, <coughs> is there a geographical expansion also started playing out uh, i think uh, there is no substantial shift yes we are expanding uh, immunovolt is something which is going to markets which are uh, relatively less uh, important for glucon d earlier so we we are making efforts but there is a these brands are 50 60 years of legacy so it will not happen overnight but uh, there is clearly an effort so i but, i cannot uh, share we'll any substantial distribution which will go up so we will have yeah. a better geographical direct reach yeah 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 Uh, and secondly, on the compliance, sir. Also, you, uh, you know, we as a company initiated that's uh, the pharmacy channel. So, uh, how is the response there, sir? Uh, and uh, how is that, uh, you know, especially, uh, you know, because the Jaidas is more on the western part. So, how is the performance in that geography? So, pharmacy channel has responded well. In fact, pharmacy channel across our brands, we dialed up. much more uh, as the lockdowns happened and it was a channel which was very helpful so so uh, complan has responded well in the pharmacy channel and even uh, the extension of nutri grow early days and therefore we'll have to wait it out but uh, right now the pharmacy mm-hmm. channel is responding well and we continue to believe there is a uh, pot- potential to do better in that channel for complan so specific to the nutri grow only we are more focused on the pharmacy distribution yeah that's because, that's uh, where we want to grow it first that's where we believe that will yeah. be the best way to, for the brand to grow because the role of uh, uh, the healthcare professionals the doctors in particular has a larger play in that segment and uh, that's why we are focused there uh, so it's just been 3 uh, 4 months of launch so early milestones uh, we more or less on track we'll have to wait and watch uh, before we can start saying that to give you a more detailed feedback yeah now i have two clarification sir uh, want to make so one uh, as you had said that the income tax uh, uh, you know the benefit is of a goodwill amortization and that will be for up to 5 years is there a element of uh, your plants as well which are situated in north east and how long that will be so the benefit of goodwill uh, amortization overrides the plant benefit that we have in the income tax act 
uh, at our Sikkim unit 1 and 2, we have a benefit of eight, section 80 IE, but the goodwill depreciation will override that and we'll have overriding impact because of that. We will not have a tax uh, mm -hmm. element at least next four to five years. Oh, okay, okay. And the second is related to, as uh, you had mentioned earlier, that related to the net debt, and uh, there is an NCD of uh, some uh, which you are going to pay in the October. So, uh, so the entire NCD will be get over by the uh, second quarter. Is it like that's already done? That's already done. We have repurchased all the NCDs and extinguished them all. So that's uh, there is another uh, you know uh, some around uh, 376 uh, crore uh, 395 crore or something 395 crore yeah so that is yeah. also done yeah that's done so, okay. thank you sir yeah thank you sir thank you for taking my question Thanks. thank you the next question is from the line of Vinay Shukla from Philip Capital please go ahead. Venay Shukla from Philip Capital, please unmute your line and go ahead with the question. Venay Shukla from Philip Capital, please unmute the audio line from your side and go ahead with the question. As there's no response, we take the next question from the line of Shalini Gupta from Quantum Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, good afternoon, sir. I want, wanted a few clarifications. One is you, you uh, talked about GST support being withdrawn. So if you could just please uh, like, uh, throw some more light on exactly what is this budgetary GST budgetary support and that has been withdrawn. So government actually, you know, in an area-based exemptions, uh, which is more applicable to Sitarganj and Sikkim unit, Government grant support uh, in form of GST budgetary support. So whatever GST amount which is payable uh, every month and every quarter, we get certain percentage benefit of that from the government. And that is the GST budgetary support. So which was there for up to 10 years and which just uh, ceased to exist in last December 2019. For the Sitargan yeah, plant. For the plant. So, sir, that would have been bad for the first quarter as well, right? Yeah, that's right. That was there for the first quarter that's as well. Right. Okay. And, uh, sir, uh, like what, uh, I mean, we were last quarter in the conference call, you had said that uh, we will see the impact of lower milk prices going forward, as in the second quarter onwards. But that does not seem to have happened. Your raw material is, uh, I mean, your gross margins is, is still is still uh, lower than, than what it was even in the first quarter. By 200 bits. So, uh, is there any change? Yeah. Is there any change in 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 uh, um, in your or uh, in in how? I mean, in either how you have dealt with the raw material or, or your sourcing arrangements or something of that sort? So there has been no change in the kind of arrangement that we have with our suppliers or sourcing the material sourcing material strategy as well. So as I told you, that milk price reflection has already been there in the G. Uh, the margin issue is mainly on account of the GF, discontinuation of GST budgetary support and little bit of product mix. Other than that, there is no problem with the margin as well. And going forward in Q, Q3, we see the margin improvement because the milk prices are benign. There, there could be a little bit stress on the RPO prices, but uh, we see a margin improvement in Complan in the next quarter. And, so there is a little bit, just to add, it's a weighted average of uh, SMP bought earlier and fresh, so uh, of the milk bought, uh, and SMP is kept for three to six months. So some of those impacts would have come. Otherwise, uh, we've been buying milk at lower than uh, as as we had explained earlier. So yeah, that's already built in. Uh, so uh, how, uh, but if I understand it, uh, palm oil prices are up about 14-15 percent. Why? Why is that correct? Year on year, it's actually higher than that right now. So uh, right now, MPOB is reporting a fairly high uh, number. So there there is a increase in price in palm oil. 
Okay, uh, so I mean, if you could just give a give a sense of how much the the palm oil prices are up. So from our pa- last purchase before we were covered, that increase will be about thirty thirty five percent from what we uh, see. But versus last year, you're right. It, uh, around the same time, November December, the palm oil prices had gone up. So versus that, it'll be the impact maybe only about ten percent. But versus on a sequential basis, we're seeing a substantial increase. So palm oil uh, MPOV was operating twenty three hundred uh, ringgit in uh, about uh, six to eight months back. Now it is operating anything between three thousand and three thousand two hundred ringgit. So on a sequential basis, it has gone up. Uh, last year around this time, it was if I remember correctly twenty eight twenty nine twenty nine hundred three thousand. It is slightly higher than last year, also about eight to ten percent, and about thirty uh, percent over six months back. Okay, and uh, sir, if you could give the same same figures for milk, please. From for for milk, milk, oh, milk, milk. Because and, my uh, understanding. Hmm. Your understanding, if you could complete, please. No, <laughs> so my understanding is that milk prices are down almost more than thirty percent on a like a versus say the first quarter. So I mean, if, if and that is my understanding, if you could just please please try uh, give give a sense of what it actually is. Yeah. So quarter four last year, uh, if we look at uh, January to March, the prices were extremely high. uh and we had no visibility of it coming down there was no no estimate available from anyone that it will come down so we continue to buy smp as we uh, sorry milk and generating smp because we were planning to continue using it however after the lockdown uh, because of uh, milk consumption and there were other challenges the whole uh, prices dropped uh, from um, april may and that decrease from our purchase rate would be about uh, uh about 7 about 15 to 18% uh, lower that has continued and we that's really helping us but we had accumulated uh, uh, smp looking at from a medium per, uh, term perspective so right now the milk prices stay at the same level as it had come down in quarter 1 and uh, we are expecting next one to two quarters at the same level after that it is anybody's guess there are uh, both bullish and bearish uh, proponents we will not be able to you know really comment on that but next one to two quarters we we believe the same prices will remain okay and uh, sir uh, neutralite if you could just give a sense of of the kind of uh, um, if you could just just uh, speak about neutralite growth and and um, sure because so most of it is used in, in Is is used in restaurants and hotels, where you know, I mean, even the bar opened, but I don't know much about the about the capacity that is being utilized there. Because even though restaurants and hotels are open, I'm not sure how many people are going there. So, so uh, neutralite about seventy percent of our business is on food service and horeca. Uh, remaining thirty is on. Uh, More on or twenty five percent is closer to what we do over the retail, uh, which is B two C. Now the horeca business has been badly hit uh, for obvious reasons, and uh, the impact was across all brands. This is the brand which has got the steepest hit uh, in the lockdown. What we've seen is uh, April was the worst month. Every month has been better than that. but it is still to cover to the last year's numbers we are hopeful by end of uh, uh, october december quarter or maybe early january we should be touching our uh, last year's numbers and hopefully build further on the growth having said this uh, i mean this is still our plan and this is what we are seeing that uh, with the change in prices of oil and which we'll have to pass it on to the uh, customer there may be some other impacts which are hard to predict at this stage uh, the the retail part has shown far more resilience unfortunately uh, retail part also has some good uh, uh, you know support of modern trade which has also been under pressure so it's been a brand which has gone seen fairly difficult phase but we are seeing good resilience of the brand and coming back uh, give us at least 2 uh, 3 months before we are we can which we are hoping that we'll be back to last year's numbers and start building growth uh, from there on uh, on this brand
Okay. And uh, so your your view on ad spend going forward? Sorry. Advertisement uh, advertisement expenses. So advertising, we are we are focused on about 14% uh, uh, A2S ratios that we typically operate. It obviously varies from quarter to quarter. Uh, this is a time when we are also being very conscious of the fact that we have to be fair on our P&L requirements. We are also seeing some uh, benefit of, uh, I mean, we are putting the two uh, uh, ent uh, entities together and negotiating better. So we are hoping we'll also get some uh, efficiency benefits uh, also. So we we stay in an annualized level between 13.5% to 14%. It may change quarter to quarter depending upon uh, the initiative as well as the brand, uh, as well as the intensity of the business. So my last question, I mean, uh, when, I, when we look at the, look at the staff costs, it is 43 crores for the quarter. Whereas it used to be, it was 53 crores for the first quarter. So was there some kind of one-off in the first quarter? First quarter, there is an impact of uh, you know annual increment variable pay variable pay that we have uh, paid out. I, I think you've re reclassified the first quarter because there were some other uh, costs also taken. That now, has been done through all the quarters. Uh, now it's been done all the quarters. Uh, so yeah. uh, overall, we've seen uh, for first half, we've seen about 11.5% growth in employee cost. And uh, like Omesh explained, if you take out the actuarial costs which are required for balancing the policies, etc., uh, we are seeing about five to six percent kind of growth despite the increments uh, we have given uh, to all employees. So that's that's the more like uh, number for employee cost. Okay, thank you, sir. All the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Ranade from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Rahul Ranade from Goldman Sachs, please unmute the audio line from your side and go ahead. Rahul Ranade from Goldman Sachs, please unmute the, your line from your side and go ahead. As there's no response, we take the next question from the line of Jaspreet Singh Arora from Equintus PMS. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just if you could, uh, you mentioned the number, of, sorry, I missed that, the, the GST budgetary support, what was the amount, sir, you mentioned for the quarter that's been absent now? It was it was 7 crore for the quarter for Sitar Ganj. And for the full year, sir, how, was it, how much was it for the last financial year? It was 32 crore, close to 32 crore. Okay, and and so just to understand this, uh, how, how it's reflected in the in in the annual reports, I couldn't uh, get this. So, uh, this is something you pay and you get 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 it back from the government, or you did not pay it in the first place. So we get it back from the government. It is reported as other operating income in the financial statement. In the other operating income. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. And. Um, uh, just uh, the and the second question sir was in terms of uh, the um, the product category you mentioned neutralized uh, neutralite was the um, the most hit because of you know 75 25 being the ratio in terms of you know the the restaurant and and uh, whatever out of home versus in home um, uh, what's the, I'm, I'm just trying to understand how is the confidence uh, uh, coming because the restaurant and, and all those places still seem, seem to be operating at, you know, suboptimal levels, even as we speak today. So how are you, from where are you getting that, uh, you know, uh, numbers or the evidence that by December you should be back to the numbers pre-COVID? If you could just elaborate more on that, please. We are relying on our internal trend that every month has been better. And at, at the current uh -huh. trend level, in another three to four months, uh, we should be back to the normal levels as last year. Of course, uh, uh, in, in the current environment, it is hard to predict, but we are relying on the current uh, last uh, six months of results that we've our own performance we've seen. Of course, we know that the horeca will be continue to be hit, but we are also contributing to a valuable uh, value driven part of it. So maybe we are able to, you know, leverage that. Also, and that's how. Uh, 
that a lot of marginalized players have left the market which yeah. obviously helps when there are these issues and also right. with the right product mix that the team is targeting uh, and with the critical uh, variants that are very important in different segments uh, we are seeing some revival on that so that will improve and definitely the retail side will also come up with some new additions so overall neutralite as i said post december should start uh, normalizing and g- gaining then after that sure sure and and um, uh, um, besides this uh, so this was obviously the uh, one end and the other end was i think sugar free which which you said did reasonably well all the other product categories did you mention we are uh, you are about 80 to 90% levels uh, pre covid is that what you broadly uh, no, mentioned no no, like, no, no they are growing yeah, they are all growing so they the growing means as we speak today they would be more than what they were talking in in october last year that's right I, actually other than ev youth which uh, so we mentioned ev youth became almost closer to parity towards the end of this quarter and we are in some parts actually growing better uh, but most other sure. brands have seen uh, positive uh, traction across in terms of growth okay so that, the worst nice it was neutral and we we were expecting sure and how much would neutral be contributing sir to our to our revenue so i don't have that information we don't so give we don't uh, touch it. product wise Okay, I mean, not even a general uh, this thing. I mean, mid twenties or it's less than one fourth. I mean, is there's no color you'd give on on product category uh, breakup? No. Is there anything? It's not okay, one okay. of the large category. It's not one of the largest category. It is one of the large categories that you have. It is not one of the large. It is not. All right, all right, all right. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir, and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Tejesh Shah from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity again. Am I audible now? Yeah, yeah, Tejesh. Hello. Better. Yeah. Better. Uh, yeah. So uh, first, I'll, I'll start with the strategic question. Uh, so the cornerstone of uh, our strategy of integration was that the distribution footprint will double and uh, easily. And in fact, we are targeting uh, somewhere around the uh, five lakh. Uh, uh direct reach by uh, december 2020 obviously this was pre pandemic guidance so where are we on that uh, journey and why some of those synergies are not showing up in growth and and margins yet so first of all uh, distribution uh, we've uh, in my speech uh, i mentioned we are looking at march 21 to achieve our uh, half a million uh, target of uh, number in that like uh, you you right because of the lockdown we had to delay this uh, plan so so it's we are well underway we are already at 3 uh, and a half we should be touching a half a million by march uh, 2021 on the direct uh, distribution expansion as far as the synergy benefits are there i think uh, there are uh, there are three or four areas which we are working on and which we see the whole uh, numbers coming through uh one is people cost uh, which we mentioned to you we have uh, we have about 15% uh, reduction in people we also are uh, without the actual costs if you look at just the actual cost of uh, people uh, despite giving uh, novel increases and uh, uh, routine expansions the cost increase for the first 6 months is closer to about 5 and 1/2 6% and some of the benefits have also been accrued to us uh, Uh, in earlier quarters as well so we've been uh, passing on some of those benefits as we go along so uh, so that's one uh, element second is in terms of higher realizations uh, due to uh, uh, recalibration of uh, trade margins specifically uh, trade partner margins that has happened on account of uh, that is already there in our improved realization for across the brand portfolio uh, that we've sun done uh, umesh actually explained that uh, there was a one time reduction in uh, trade margins last year around this quarter so some of those benefits we have taken uh, on board as we went along rather than accumulating and showing it one off so so some of those benefits they were like for like may not show across the portfolio there is a further reduction in it costs because there were two separate it costs two separate it infrastructures which we been able to reduce we are also seeing uh, value uh, improvement in terms of our break uh, uh, expiry and breakage very small but uh, i think these numbers have started adding up to our pnl and it shows up 
some impact of our uh, mix which also comes up and uh, typically uh, quarter 2 and quarter 3 are the hardest to explain given the fact that the uh, overall overhead ratio is much higher to the sales and that's when uh, these uh, some of these gaps show up but uh, at an annualized level we believe the entire numbers will uh, fully show up and i think just to add so from still, point of view yeah. also that we are tracking much ahead in terms of our savings on uh, the synergies so i think that is on track and as he said rightly quarter 3 and uh, quarter this these two quarters are obviously much lower than the uh, quarter 4 and quarter 1 and if you you'll have to look at annualized to see the overall value because there is a big difference between sales and the profit between the fourth and first quarter and the second and third quarter so it gets heightened highlighted more here but overall i think we are on a we feel we'll be well ahead of what we were planning sure so does it mean that uh, our cost synergies are going as per plan but uh, because of uh, pandemic and low absorption uh, uh, because of low revenue throughput uh, those numbers are not surf surfacing at margins level yet and uh, going ahead uh, you stick to your guideline or a guidance in some form that we will we'll revert uh, mean revert to 20% kind of margin as is all those things normalizes in one or two years is, is that correct understand yeah so i think one, we, we, we primarily yeah, have to understand if you take the operational performance in terms of profits we have grown double digit in spite of still a single digit growth so that one of it is to, due to GST uh, credit, which will go away from next, I mean, which will not be in the base next year. The second is we are mm -hmm. continuously looking at network optimization, which will further add some value on the gross margin side. And also the product mix, which will help. So we are very, we, we are confident that going forward, you will see good improvement in margins. Sure. Uh, another question on distribution expansion on growth. So how does this ratio uh, uh, work? So basically, if I double my direct reach, uh, it should show up in numbers also, or is it largely the fill rate and distribution efficiency, which can't be measured on revenue directly? So how does that uh, relationship work? So, so direct distribution will work uh, largely on improving the quality of uh, distribution available being able to reach out more products through that channel uh, because some of these outlets typically have some of our products already available through a uh, indirect channel because overall availability is closer to 2 million. Uh, my direct reach will go from uh, three and a half lakh to 5 lakh. So it's not necessarily uh, adding more products, uh, sorry, adding uh, uh, those uh, outlets, unserviced outlets, but uh, less service outlets into the uh, portfolio where we'll be able to place the wider portfolio, service them better and improve our fill rates. And this gives us uh, sustained uh, growth, uh, also a better performance on our NPDs and lower cost as well. So, would it, yeah. Yeah. so, so would, would it be fair assumption that when you reach 25% of your overall, overall reach to direct distribution, a revenue contribution of those outlets will be in, in vicinity of 40 or 50% uh, or, or and in any ballpark number if you can help. No, substantially more. Typically, uh, most companies operate 62, uh, I mean, in a, in a, and I isolate the bond trade e-commerce because they play a very different role. Within a direct, dis within the uh, traditional trade distribution, uh, most companies operate 1 is to 4 direct to, in, uh, direct to total reach and about 60-65% uh, sales coming from that. It depends. Again, okay. it's brand to brand variant uh, because some of the larger brands have a much uh, better presence through the indirect. So, so it may happen brand to brand, but it will be about sixty to seventy percent of our sales comes will come from these, and twenty five percent of direct availability. And and as on today, we'll be at three point five lakh or three and a half lakhs. That's right. Directly. Three and a half lakhs. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, another question. Uh, one Usually of the... We used to be around 2.2, 2.3. We have come to 3.5 and uh, soon hit the 5 lakh mark. Okay. And in, in this addition of 1 lakh that we have done in the recent past, are we seeing the delta on from those stores which we are actually hoping to get it when we reach 5 lakh in terms of revenue throughput and fill, fill efficiency and distribution efficiency? Absolutely. I think across our portfolio, we are seeing a good uh, traction from, so even if in a uh, difficult phase, we've seen, and especially last three, four, five months, we've seen uh, these numbers, uh, these are, uh, you know, service levels of these outlets gone up. 
and these are contributing to our growth uh, across the board we are seeing general trade responding better uh, and uh, we track them on a regular purchase level we are seeing a improved uh, availability and also, in as sales and was alluding to any new introduction it really helps so you know our last introduction ever youth we have seen the best ever launch in terms of number of outlets reached in the shortest period of time so uh, i think all of those are those added benefits once you are improving your direct distribution Sure, definitely. Uh, so second question is on compliance. Uh, so uh, one of the strategy of our competitor, which is al- already in public domain and documented also, that uh, uh, rural penetration is is the way forward for the category. And and they they also gave this example that uh, the category is uh, uh, under indexed to a some some category like even coffee. It is it is actually the penetration is half in rural versus urban, and uh, uh, then the category. So are we also uh, uh, following that path because it seems like a new hanging fruit from strategy perspective. And second, the I mean, overall environment we are hearing that rural is actually uh, doing better than urban across categories. Uh, are we seeing that kind of traction for the category level also? So, one one thing I can share within the general trade, I mentioned ten percent growth for our business. The super stock is business which uh, caters largely to rural and. Uh, uh, low pop strata in urban uh, grew at 30 percent so we are actually leveraging very well for the uh, rural availability now specifically on compliant for us i think there is much bigger uh, task of growing our brand and getting back our uh, you know brand back on uh, track which we are seeing some tra- uh, benefit of uh, if uh, we see a uh, expansion in rural uh, uh, Penetration for this category, I think we will certainly gain. Markets like uh, uh, high high rural markets like UP Bihar have seen good double digit growth of uh, Complan, uh, and therefore we are gaining. We will gain from those uh, you know markets as well. Uh, Tamil Nadu, which is a relatively a low rural market, I think has been under pressure. So so I think for us. The priority is to get our brand distribution, brand proposition working from the consumer execution point of view. If they are able to expand the category in the rural, uh, due to our expanding distribution in the rural space, uh, we will be able to leverage that as well. But I will not be the driver of category growth in those markets. So lastly, uh, you spoke about one modern trade uh, chain in particular being under pressure. So do we have any big outstanding to that chain? Because uh, most likely that chain is under serious stress now. No, not significant. No, no, no. We don't have any serious exposure. Overall, modern trade has been under pressure. One particular, you're right. But no, no major exposure. No major outstanding. Sure. Uh, that's all from my side, sir. And all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. On behalf of Zydus Wellness Limited, that concludes this conference. We thank you all for joining us, and you may now disconnect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.